Are you guys ready for some soul chat? We are going to be talking to Miss Camille Dangerfield of Intentional Woman about mentalities and the mentality of possibility. I hope you guys are ready for this. Let's get into some soul chat. Welcome back to Soul Chat, everybody. I am your host, Jessica Ray. Thank you once again for being here. You guys, we have a phenomenal show today, an amazing show. We have the privilege of having our very own Camille Dangerfield here. Camille, all right, she is actually a talk show host herself. She is the host of Intentional Woman. She runs the Intentional Circle. She's an entrepreneur, a mother, a wife, you name it, she does it. I want you guys to help me welcome Camille Dangerfield. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh, this is such an honor, a privilege, a pleasure to, to just be sitting here with you. Thank you, Jen. You guys, we're going to be talking about possibility mentality, mm -hmm. possibility mentality. When you think of that, what comes to mind? Well, we're getting ready to get into some heavy stuff today, guys. And I want you to open your mind and just really kind of expand that thing. And Camille is going to be teaching us or helping us understand what it means to have a possibility mentality. So I'm going to go ahead and get right on into this with you, Camille. I've known her for just a little while, but I've been so influenced by her. And actually, she's been like a really big motivator for me to do what I'm doing. So I'm going to really, really dig into her mind and feel free to take some notes. OK. All right, guys. So first, I would love to ask Camille, why talk show? Why would you choose a talk show host out of anything else that you could do in this life. Hmm. You chose that field. Nobody does that, by the way. That is something off the beaten path. All right. So I want to understand what was your process in becoming a talk show host? So I definitely did not decide or like choose it. It definitely chose me. Uh, same way with everything that you named that I do. Um, I didn't come up with any of these ideas. The coaching, the none of it. Mm. I, I literally decided when I got pregnant with my third daughter that I wasn't going back to work. I said, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I got to figure out <laughs> something to do. And so I started putting video content out because what I did know was that I wanted to build something online. And I knew that I had to have an audience in order to do that. Right. So I just started putting content out there and I talked about a bunch of different stuff at first. Mm -hmm. But around the same time, I started down my own personal development journey. And so I started naturally talking about what I was learning, what I was doing, the things that were happening for me. And out of that, people started following me and they started DMing me, <laughs> asking them to coach them. So at first I resisted it because I thought a coach was a therapist. And I was like, well, I don't want, you know, yeah. I'm not getting ready to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't want people telling me their problems all the time and all of that. Right. <laughs> and so I resisted it. But ultimately, that's where I landed. And then out of me showing up in that capacity, the opportunity for the talk show presented itself. Again, I didn't choose it. Someone who was launching a channel who at that time was an associate, not even a friend yet. But she had seen me online doing what I do. And she said, I'm launching a network. I want you to have a show. And so that's, that's how the talk show came about. Are you telling me that you literally evolved into that? Like that was nowhere in your mind. Girl, I'm still evolving. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> yes. Like it's, <laughs> honestly, and I just, I just wrapped up the production of my second season and I feel like it's just now really setting in and I'm just now kind of planting my feet and deciding what I want it to be. And so season three is going to look totally different than what the previous seasons did because I'm, I'm in it now and mm. I can see what I, what I want it to be. So you got to start and you kind of needed it to take shape. So you had like maybe like a lump of clay and then you began to form it. And then before you knew it, you were here as a talk show host and it's still forming. It's still evolving. How do you feel about that? Like, 
do you feel like we need to start off knowing exactly what it is that we're supposed to be doing in this life? You can try it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> What's going to happen if you try it? Right. God's going to laugh at you. Uh-huh. And say, okay, that was cute, but this is how it's gonna how it's gonna go. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I believe God has a great sense of humor, just because of the people that He has created who have the senses of humor, right? So we're all created in His image. Yes. I believe that He laughs at us all the time because we'd be down here <laughs> making stuff harder than it has to be, mm -hmm. coming up with these you know overthinking things, and it's just I think that of course you should try to create a plan. I'm not saying to get out here just doing stuff right. without having a plan, but don't be married to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I believe everybody has a start. So there's a genesis. We have a plan. You know, everybody, when we're young, maybe you want to be a, a truck driver, policeman or whatever. And it might start that way. Mm -hmm. But there's something in being that truck driver. There's something in being that policeman, possibly saving people or being the hero in life. But it won't it won't stay there. So that could evolve into, hmm, let me help people. Let me maybe be a nurse or let me now be a doctor or let me now be a physician. But the whole, I think that really when you boil it down, mm -hmm. it's the helping part. So it might start one thing yeah. and end up something else. Did you start knowing that at least you wanted to be out there talking or did you ever see yourself behind the scenes? I never saw myself behind the scenes. But I didn't, me getting out there to talk, it wasn't because I necessarily wanted to be in front of people. Mm -hmm. I just saw it as the way to start making some money online. That was literally the reason why I started. I'm like, I need to create a business. It started with some money. Okay. Right. <laughs> and so, yeah, no, that was, that was legit. Yes. Why it started, I needed to replace my income and I wanted to do it from home. Mm -hmm. And so the people who I saw succeeding were putting out videos. That's why I did it. I, it wasn't that I just wanted to be on camera. Mm -hmm. I was nervous, armpits sweating. <laughs> I was like totally second guessing myself, critiquing everything about myself. I mean, down to. Yeah. So like my issue when I first turned on the camera to do a video, mm -hmm. the thing that stood out to me about my face was that my chin was not symmetrical. Oh, come so on. I sat there like looking at my face. And then it finally got to a point where I was like, okay, either, you know, your face has been like this your whole life. And <laughs> when you die, your face is going to be not going to change. So right. either you can turn on this camera and do these videos, <laughs> or you can end up back at that job that you don't want to go to. Right. So I, I just was like, hey, I'm, I'm going to do it. Cause that's the only, that was the only, and I'm sure there are plenty of other things I could have done. Right. Mm -hmm. But for me at the time, that's all that I could think was the next step. So I just, that's what I did. Yeah. But you know what? To me, and see, when we had our prior conversation, you really, really baffled me because there doesn't seem to be any limitations. There doesn't seem to be a mental blockage with you. How do you, how does your upbringing influence how you think? Because it seems like there, the sky is the beginning. <clears throat> well, so I... My parents were not entrepreneurs, right? Um, but they did create this belief in me that I could do whatever I wanted to do, right? Um, going to, to college, was a, that was an assumption. Like, this is the path that you go, yeah. right, for my parents. So I did that. But I've always had things on the side, little things that I tried to do. And my parents always supported that. Um, and so I didn't get, you know, some people have that, that negative chatter when you try to do something and people are tearing you down. I never had that. Mm -hmm. So there was always support in my inner circle, which, which helped. And then with my dad, I just saw him always pushing limits and like just excellence was kind of normalized yeah. for me. I don't think I realized that when I was young, that that's what I was seeing. Mm -hmm. But looking back now, it's, you know, completely obvious yes that watching him was making was taking limits off of me mm -hmm. that you know some of my peers probably were had different mindsets you know yeah this is what I'm hearing so when you're thinking when I think of you so you said negative chatter mm -hmm. negative chatter whatever stops us it comes from our mind 
we're hearing some type of voice. You know, you can't do it. You're not enough. You're going to fail. You won't succeed. Um, look at the people before you that didn't do well. A lot of negative chatter. Uh, you're not, you know, it'll, it'll tell you anything and everything. It does not seem like you had voices around you that were putting you down. It seemed like they were building you up. It seems like your mind, like the framework of your mind was always healthy. You don't have to compete against voices of yesterday. That's what I see when I'm talking to you. So the dominating voices, mm -hmm. right? Because there's always going to be some negative chatter. And there was negative chatter about me. Okay. I don't think, did I share with you that I was a teen mom? You did. Okay. So I got pregnant at 15. There was tons of negative chatter about me. Yeah. Right? Um, it, that wasn't as normal as it is now. Like today, it, there's a lot of young girls just having babies and it seems to be, there's not a, as much of a stigma attached for mm -hmm. them. Um, but at that time, I had to leave the school that I was attending to go to a public school. So there was a lot of negative chatter about me. Okay. Depending on who you talk to. <sighs> I can imagine. But that wasn't the dominating conversation for me. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, okay, because when I told my parents, when I told my dad that I was pregnant, and I'm sure he probably wanted to fall out on the ground or I don't know, but he was just like, okay, right? This is what it is. We don't do abortions and you're still going to be on track to do everything that you were. You know, it wasn't like, it was like a pause. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, okay. Right. Like we got you and you're still going to graduate the top of your class. You're still going to college. You're still like you're not going to miss a beat. Yeah. And so. Again, not normal. Not normal. Right. A lot of girls that get pregnant at that age, that's not how they're received. Oh, not by at their all. Parents. Not at all. Parents, right? That's what I'm wondering is, yeah. I mean, apparently you did not have to deal with how dare you. You can't come in my house like this. You're not going to be anybody. What do you think would have happened? Had that been the voices or the, you know, the reaction that you got? Who knows, right? Because it's not that I'm better than any of the other girls that got pregnant at 15. Yeah. I had better support. Mm -hmm. So that's why, you know, for me, and that's one of the, the things that I'm passionate about. I know that's part of my purpose is to support teen moms. Beautiful. I've known that for, for a while because I'm like, I just, I saw the difference between me and some of my peers. And it's like. It was the support. It was my family. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I had to have some, you know, I had to do the work, mm -hmm. but I had the support. Tell me what the work looked like. Was it inner work? Was it outer work? Was it mental? Was it heart work? How do you get over something so drastic where the world would be questioning, oh my goodness, you know, that is so out of the norm and all that. How do you get over that? So back then, I just... Again, I think that my parents were able to transfer their confidence onto me. Mm -hmm. I if, I didn't give it too much thought. Like there was a day, so I was at a, a private religious school. Mm -hmm. And there was a day that I realized, okay, I was going to have to take gym that semester. I was starting to show. And I just got on the phone and I was like, somebody come get me and I don't want to come back. Mm -hmm. Right. So we left <laughs> there. Um, I enrolled into the public school in my district and I just went. I don't I don't remember giving much thought to like, oh, you know, how am I going to get it was just like I need to go to school and, and do it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I was there for a couple months, had the baby, came back for finals. And then it was the next school year. I just showed up and continued to be myself. You kept it moving. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't really, and I've never thought that much about it. I think you're, this is the first conversation that I've had about that. Um, that should have, that should have taken um, you out. You know what I'm I saying? In, God, in, I guess. I God. Don't, I didn't, there was, I never consciously worked on my mindset until a few years ago. Okay. So it wasn't, it wasn't conscious. I never had any therapy or, you know. Nothing along those lines. So, wow. You didn't have to deal with voices because you had support from your environment. So I just want to point out the how important 
nurture is, how yeah. important nurture is. If you're in an environment where you're being nurtured and someone is talking to you, blessing you, ministering to you, building you up, you create a possibility mentality. Mm -hmm. It's fostered there. That is the groundwork. That's the foundation for who you become. If you have the right influences around you, you can do anything. So for you, it was more like your environment did not compete with you. It was helpful. It was nurturing. Mm -hmm. It was nourishing. Yeah. And so success is, I mean, because I see you very successful right now. Okay. And you're, you're just now starting in my opinion, like you're about to hit a stride and you're getting ready to go and it's going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, but success is easy for you because you don't have a lot of inner chatter. So I'm wondering, what would you tell someone who did grow up like that, who maybe their parent was hard on them and, mm -hmm. you know, you have to be the best or you're nothing or you're not enough or you'll never be successful or you're going to be just like your father or you won't make it, you know, or look at all the mistakes that you've made. You're going to end up in this particular situation. How can they overcome that chatter? Because their framework is already busted. Mm -hmm. So do you have any tips for somebody out there on how to overcome that? Yeah. So what what I first want to say to you, like if you're watching and you're like, okay, she's in my house right now. Um, it, it does not matter where you are at this moment. Like your past, even your most recent past does not dictate the future. So let's put that on the table now that you can always create something different, even if it's been your life experience to this point. Um, but you, it's going to be some work, right? Yes. So you have to create that environment for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to do some, a bunch of unlearning, a bunch of unlearning. Um, probably don't want to do it alone. <laughs> probably want to get, you know, a coach, a, a therapist, yes. a mentor, probably all three, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, Cause they all serve different purposes, but we get to reprogram our, our, our mindsets. Mm. I learned that about five years ago. Reprogram. <laughs> you can reprogram it all. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Because, you know, unfortunately, when people who have limiting beliefs and flawed thinking and negative thought patterns raise children, mm -hmm. they transfer that onto the children. Yes. So it's inherited to an extent to an extent, mm -hmm. right? But you can, once you become aware of the fact that, or that's the first thing, like mm -hmm. the awareness that I can actually switch this around, do something different. Yeah. And then you have to start doing that work every single day. Mm, that work. I'm day. wondering, does that work look like affirmations? Does it look like speaking to yourself? You know, let's get in your business just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Tell us what you did. I'm sure you did some stuff in the mirror. I know. Let's go. What did you do? But, so I did a bunch of stuff. <laughs> Give us a couple of the secrets. And still do. Because and still do. Again, I can I can say that the dominating I can say that the dominating thoughts are positive, productive thoughts, right? Prosperous thoughts. Mm -hmm. Not all. I still have negative chatter just like everybody else does. Uh -huh. I d I don't think that you ever erase it completely. Especially every time you start trying to step out of your comfort zone. It kicks up higher, right? So I still have have to remind myself sometimes the stuff that so the ladies in my coaching group, they're crazy. They they <laughs> say, bet. Well, I was doing this and then I started saying, Well, what what would Camille do, right? What would Camille do? And sometimes I have to ask Camille, what would Camille do? Or what would I tell them to do? Mm -hmm. Right? Because sometimes we get complacent and we don't do the things that we know to do. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you let up. That's when all the stuff that you've already overcome will start trying to creep back up, right? So it's it's a constant thing. It's just like a muscle. Yes. You know, you can work out and get your body right, and you can stop. Mm. It, you can't hold on, like, <laughs> right? Last month's workout is not sufficient for today's results. No, it's right? not. It's so, not. And then what about sabotage? Because I'm sure that a lot of people deal with sabotage from their past. So maybe they've tried to do something. They thought they were over an issue. There was um, something that chased them into their future. And they thought they, they're good, all is well. But somehow 
they sabotage themselves because the voice of yesterday, all that negative chatter tries to creep in when they're triggered again. Something in life is going to trigger that voice of the past. I'm wondering, is there something in particular one can do to combat those triggers? What can you do to combat that voice that wants to chase you? Because it does. You know, it's in, it's an influence from uh, from yesterday. How can you combat that old voice, that old dirty voice? Yeah. So you have to make sure, first of all, that you've actually dealt with it mm. at the root. Yes. Because sometimes we think we're dealing with stuff and we're just kind of glossing over it, putting some lipstick on it. You yes. know what I mean? Yeah. But we haven't really dealt with it. And so it'll keep coming back up. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and sometimes in different forms. Right. Just like. Well, I won't get into that type of an example. I was going <laughs> to. Be, be a nerd and talk about health and underlying <laughs> we're not going to do that but <laughs> just okay here's here's a simpler analogy like if if there was a weed mm -hmm. right some weeds kept popping up in your yard and you just kind of kept you know cutting them down but never actually plucked them all the way out or actually put anything down to actually kill them at the root right you're still going to have to keep constantly Right. It's going to keep coming up. It's still there. Mm -hmm. Right. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that I've actually gotten to the bottom of this. Have I actually dealt with the reason why I behave the way I behave? Mm -hmm. Or am I just trying to address the behavior itself? Oh, that's so good. Right. Yeah. The core. What What is the real reason? So right. does that mean going all the way back to one's past? Does that mean retelling, you know, like going into your story, getting in your own business, getting down in the dirt? Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, getting to the truth. And sometimes what the truth hurts, but the truth will yeah. set you set free. You free right? Yeah, it'll yeah. set you free. And so maybe that truth is that, you know, I procrastinate. Maybe the truth is that um, I don't really believe in myself. Maybe the truth is I'm insecure. Maybe the truth is, you know, I, I, I don't know. I'm not as competent or I'm not confident. It is not easy and it's not comfortable to tell ourselves that type of truth because we always want to appear to people one particular way. Right. But when we look in the mirror, we have to tell the truth. Otherwise, we're living a lie. We're living a lie and it will always show up somewhere. It will all, we can't, we cannot escape it. So it's, it's wonderful that you did your own therapy. Did you actually go to any therapist though? I've never been to therapy. You've never been to therapy, but I you did it at home. I and mentors, but I, I've never had a therapist. Okay. Is there anything else like journaling that you did? Oh yeah. So and I don't think I ever actually answered that question. When you asked me about the stuff that I did, I think I took us on to another tangent. Yeah. So things that I've done um yes the affirmations right mm -hmm. like you said affirmations i've done visualization work a lot of journaling um i've i've done some exercises to actually consider you know what are what do i really truly believe about this thing yeah because sometimes what we say we believe and what we truly believe are two different things mm -hmm. um it's been a lot of spiritual growth and really um practicing and finding practical ways to apply what I've been taught. You know, I grew up in the church and sometimes you go and you hear the same stuff kind of over and over and no one's making it real world. You know, how do I actually walk this out? So it, it's that. Mm -hmm. um, it's a combination of things. It's finding the right community. It's getting coaching. It's um, getting in the mirror. Like you mentioned, mirror work. Mm -hmm. There's that. I mean, there are a lot of different things. Some of it is just Practice and feeling good. Ooh, practice and feeling good. And setting good. The, the atmosphere. Yeah, music, Ooh, movement, yes. that matters. Mm -hmm. What you say matters. How you feel when you say what you say matters. Because that's a big part that people miss. You can say some affirmations, but if you don't really feel it or believe it, mm -hmm. if the belief gap is too wide, right? So if I have a negative balance in my bank account mm -hmm. and I start saying I'm a millionaire, gap is too big. Yeah. Right? Yes. So you have to look at what am I saying? Can I even actually believe this? Even if I don't fully believe it, can I believe it to a certain degree? Okay. Enough for me repeating this for it to work. So right? what would be better than I'm a millionaire? What's more practical? You can say I'm becoming. That's okay. one of the easiest ways to, to make an affirmation more believable. Mm -hmm. Instead of just saying I am, say I am becoming. Mm -hmm. And if you're actually doing the work, you can believe that. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, you can believe that. So you also mentioned something about feeling. So do you literally, because I imagine feeling what you're saying means that you're using your imagination. So if you're saying, I feel like I'm on the beach, Mm -hmm. maybe you're bringing in the water in your mind. Maybe you are hearing the sound of the waves. Maybe you're feeling the waves on your feet. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe you're imagining the sun. So how Girl, I was on the beach this morning. Oh my goodness. <laughs> were you on the beach? I was. What in your bedroom, in your bathroom? Where were you actually? I was, but you were I was actually in my bedroom, but I was on vacation and <laughs> I can't believe I'm telling y'all this. Most. So I was, even though I was on the vacation with my husband, I was getting a whole day to myself. Mm. So we were meeting back up for dinner, but in that moment. I was having some alone time. You were having some alone time. Mm -hmm. What does that do for you? Because I know you're intentional. This is the intentional woman, y'all. Okay? (laughs) Everything she does is intentional. She do it on purpose. Everything I do is not intentional. No, no, no. But I am striving. (laughs) It's on purpose. There's there's always two reasons why everything with with Camille Dangerfield. If she does something, there's two reasons. That is still so funny to me that people call me the intentional woman. Because it was never (laughs) that. So... The brand is the intentional woman, right? Mm-hmm. But when I when I started saying intentional woman, I never saw myself as like I am the intentional woman, mm. right? The intentional woman was this ideal, like this thing that we're stri- you know, like the Proverbs thirty one woman, like yes. we're striving for this. Mm-hmm. But somewhere along the lines, people got the idea that I am the <laughs> you are the first <laughs> intentional woman. I'm like, if yeah, but you know, I say that jokingly. But I'm, I'm, pr- I'm pretty. I'm pretty <laughs> transparent with my tribe. They know that I'm working on stuff. I, I do not have it. All, I do not have it all together. So this is amazing. I just want to tell you, thank you so much for coming on, Camille. Can you please tell us one more tip? I would love you to just end this with something. If someone wants to be more, they want to do more in this life. Uh, but they're struggling with their internals. They're struggling with the old voice. They're struggling with the can-do spirit. They're struggling with encouragement. And there's not very many people around them encouraging them. Mm -hmm. They want to do something they've never done before. And they don't have much rah-rah on the inside. How can they get that? What would be the last thing you could tell us that would help us understand how to help ourselves to get over fear or insecurity or what have you and actually do the thing? Oh, goodness. Okay, how much time do I have to answer Go that? Go for it, girl. Go uh, for it. <laughs> so, the, the short answer would be a shameless plug. Come to Intentional Circle. That's the purpose hey. of it, right? Um, intentionalcircle.com. Yes. Um, but the longer answer is, first of all, well, I have to give you a few things because there's not just one thing. Take your liberty. There's not just one thing. You have to... First of all, get clear, as clear as you can, on what is your vision. Like, what do you actually want? And write it out. Mm. I know that we hear this all the time, right? Write down your goals, write your vision, make it plain, but people still don't do it. They don't do it. (laughs) They don't do it, right? And and it's the simplest thing that, like, it doesn't cost anything. You don't have to go anywhere. Yeah, let me not say they don't do it. We don't do it. We don't, (laughs) right? And so that's, Literally the first thing, like getting clear on that. When I tell you, I wrote down, this was four and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. I wrote down what my dream day looked like. Someone challenged me to do it. It was my first time ever doing an exercise like that. When I tell you that my life is literally what I wrote on that paper. Now, I didn't have enough clarity. I didn't know I'd be doing a, a show or coaching or anything like that. But as far as what my day-to-day looked like with being home with the kids, doing something that I'm passionate about, I, you know, I wrote down some details about how my days would flow and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. That's happening now. But I wrote it down first. Just write it down. And I didn't know how. I didn't know what. There's magic in writing it down. Just write it down. Uh Uh-huh. So if I had to say one thing, it would be that. Because people just don't do it. So but what's the power behind writing it down? Because if I write something, doesn't it just stay on the paper? I mean, it's just words. You know what? I, I don't have the answer for that. <laughs> it's in the word. It says, you know, without the vision, people will perish. It Come says on. to write it. So just write it. Yeah. I don't know. 
What I'm telling you is, <laughs> it works, yes. okay? So write it down. Uh, but like you said, now, of course, if you just write it down and never ever reconnect to it, mm -hmm. just ball it up and throw it in a corner somewhere or something, maybe nothing happens. If you don't put any feet to your faith, nothing mm -hmm. happens, right? So you do have to get into motion, but you don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to know how. You don't have to. And so I think a lot of times people don't allow themselves to really spend time casting a vision because they start jumping to, well, how? Mm-hmm. And all these ideas around what they can't do and the limits and all that. That's not your business. At that point, like when you're vision casting, it's literally just about what do I want? What do I desire? What can I see? Right. And you have to stay there. And stay there for how long? For as long as it takes for you to, to feel clear mm -hmm. about what you want. Awesome. And then once you're clear mm -hmm. about what you want, I guess you'll feel that there will be something in your knower inside of you that would say, you know what, now it's okay to make, take a next step or mm -hmm. another step. So what would you say about the action portion? Do you just jump the gun and start just doing, doing, doing? Or are you strategic? Mm. So I would say once you are clear on the vision, you got to pray about it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and, and ask for Okay, what's the step? Like, what do I need to do? Yes. And and then be willing to listen, be willing to look for the signs, be willing to start doing some research and, and listen to your spiritual nudges when it's like, okay, that's the, the way to go, right? You don't want to jump too quickly into just doing, 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 mm -hmm. because when you do that, a lot of times <laughs> we're all over the place. <laughs> yes. We don't have a proven process that we're following, mm -hmm. right? Once you decide what you want to do, there's typically someone who's already done that, mm -hmm. right? So you can find a blueprint, a course, a coach, a something. And I don't care if it's a relationship goal, a health goal, a business goal. There's someone who's been there, done that. So there's no reason to just start doing what you think might work. Because if you knew, you probably wouldn't be where you are, right? Right. And you can't very well solve a problem with the same level of thinking that created it. Mm -hmm. And so you have to, you know, yeah, follow, right. follow something. Follow different. something different and write the vision so that you can make it plain and run with it. But mm -hmm. your running is step by step. You're not just running, you know, and just beating the air and just thinking, oh, okay, it's all going to fall in place, but you're strategic. You're yeah. listening to God. Mm -hmm. And then he will, on that piece of paper where you have, this is what I want, that's what I want. He'll say, okay, this is how I want you to do it. And this is the first step. This is the second step. And you're saying you'll feel prompted on the inside. How many of us pay attention to that inside, though, that still small voice? How important is it? Or should we yeah. just, like, bypass it and do what we think we should do? Mm -hmm. So there's so much noise in the world, first of all. And so, like, the phones, all the notifications and mm -hmm. the social, all of that. Like, you're going to, I'm going to tell you, cut out all the noise. I'm going to challenge you. If you're feeling like you're not sure you need clarity on next steps, cut out, go on a fast from social media, Ooh. from the radio, mm -hmm. from the TV, like all of that noise. You might need to stop talking to certain people and just have that, that time period of just silence, right? And only listening to intentional things. Yeah. Right. And then you, you'll get the next step. You expect it. Expect it. But you're going to have to be quiet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So things will become clear. Yeah. Things will start to become very clear and it'll start to take shape. Whereas it was once just this muddy, mucky vision, very grimy in its raw form. It'll start to materialize and become something beautiful. Well, you have been amazing, okay? I know you guys have been blessed by this. I know you guys have received so many resources, so many tips, and I want you all to go ahead and follow her, Camille Dangerfield, on Intentional Woman, Intentional Circle. Look her up, look for, on Roku, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. The channel is Unheard TV. Okay, Unheard TV on Roku. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and start watching her, guys, and you will you will be so thoroughly blessed and glad that you've been watching her program because you'll get better every single week. I know that I have. Camille, thank you so much for being here. You will be on here again, okay? <laughs> thank you for having yes, me. Yes, she back will be a regular. <laughs> All right? All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching.